the latest development update for Kerbal Space Program 2 goes into some detail on the current state of the game. It gives many assurances that the game is far from dead and that in fact the title is on progress to achieve everything it sets out on the roadmap. We're going to dive into all of that in just a moment, but first I want to talk about another developer post on the difficulty of testing KSP2. In order to understand that, we're going to need a very short segue, so do bear with me for this. Imagine the universe. It's huge, right? Astronomers estimate that there are around 1 septillion stars out there. That's a 1 followed by 24 zeros, a huge, huge number. But in KSP2, there are even more spacecraft part combinations, a mind-boggling 245 factorial. This is, well, impossible to imagine. It's like counting every grain of sand on every beach on Earth and then multiplying it by a thousand or, or something else equally as crazy. It's this astronomical scale that makes testing KSP2 such a cosmic challenge. Not to mention the various other factors which just multiply the variations as well. So we're going to look at all of that along with the latest post from creative director Nate Simpson as well, and let's start with uh, Nate's post that we can see uh, right here. So he says, in the last week's post, so I communicated our intent to decrease the update cadence during early access to allow our team to devote a greater portion of their time moving forward towards version 1.0. Now, you may remember that I released a video on this, a video that I said I didn't want to record at the time where I was pointing out this issue. And for me, as I very clearly said at the time the issue wasn't the release cadence, that's not the problem I had. The release, the uh, issue rather, was the lack of acknowledgement from Intercept Games on the massive performance problems that the game has, as well as the game breaking bugs. So all well and good if they need to re uh, slow down the release cadence so they can focus on more dedicated or more detailed patches that hopefully would improve things at a better rate. But to do so without acknowledging the problems that the game currently faces, that these are significant problems, was not really the best way of going about things. So fortunately, well, it seems they have at least acknowledged the game-breaking bugs, although not the performance issues. So going back to Nate's post here, uh, perhaps not surprisingly, some of you have expressed concern that this change has signified some dark portent. So I assume they're referring to the fact that some people felt that it meant the game was on the way out, that it wouldn't survive early access or would die sometime soon. So to ease some of your concerns, here are a few clarifications. Our team is fully funded, properly staffed and completely focused on executing the full vision of KSP2. Our velocity is good and our morale is great. This is still a dream job and we're still committed to making this game spectacular. So Despite the problems that we're facing in early access right now, it seems that the developers are very happy with the way things are. Although, again, not quite acknowledging that the problems a lot of people are facing. People simply cannot play the game. So an acknowledgement of that would be good. Although that said, to be perfectly fair, there are many other people who are quite happily playing the game and without too much problems. But to get back to the post here and continue with that, we want to balance our desire to be Santa. That's literally posting uh, many, many updates, literally the most fun part of the job, says Nate, against our goal of delivering an excellent product. The update cadence we're looking at right now extends the previous cadence. So the previous cadence was two to three weeks, maybe four weeks in some cases, but the uh, cadence is going to be extended by two to three weeks. So that means we're probably looking at, I'd say, four to six weeks between patches, five to six weeks between patches. So structurally, he says the change is not that radical. Um, I know the waiting can be painful, and this is good information. We should have had this before, um, especially when there are still game-breaking bugs. So that's really what I wanted to hear, and probably something that I feel a lot of other people wanted to hear, the acknowledgement of game-breaking bugs. Sure, Intercept Games have spoken about bugs in the past. We all know that oh, nearly every game has got bugs, really. But the important thing here is to acknowledge that there are many game-breaking bugs out there that are preventing people from playing. So the fact is acknowledged that is a really good sign, I think. Hopefully, the fact that each update will contain more improvements due to the lower frequency helps to offset some of the frustration of waiting. So like I said previously, I think most people are OK with that. I'm certainly OK with the waiting. 
just so long as we know what's going on. So this project has from the beginning been viewed as a long tail endeavour requiring a long term investment. We're not worried about keeping the lights on and we will be delivering all of the promised roadmap features over the course of early access. So another good piece of information. I'm sure there'll be plenty of people out there that don't believe this, that uh, think it's another false promise. I think uh, Nate here that Intercept Games have been very, very clear. There's no room for misinterpreting this. This cannot be seen as a meaning one thing. It's not double speak. It's not PR speak. It's very clear in what it says. So personally, I do believe it. I believe this is their intention. Uh, of course, there's always the possibilities that it may not pan out that way. But I do believe that uh, well, they've got every intention of attempting this. We will also and, and also every intention or every belief in the fact that they do have the funds for continuing it because they do say this is a long tail endeavor and they planned that from the start. Carrying on, we will continue to post these weekly forum updates, which is great news, to provide visibility into areas where gains are being made. These posts are by no mean, means comprehensive, not least because many of the improvements we're seeing are not necessarily photogenic, meaning that they're not illustrated by screenshots or videos or other such things, but they are meant to give us a taste of what's to come. So this is great news. And he goes on to say, for example, we have seen a rescalable, really, yeah, what's going on? I'm messing up that word. We have seen rescalable UI elements in action for the first time this week, with many thanks to our newest engineer, uh, Brian. We know this is a highly anticipated improvement, especially for players with high resolutions displays. So those playing on 4K, the sample below is work in progress. Yes, I see the app bar isn't scaling yet. The final implementation is likely to index to preset sizes to avoid scaling artifacts. Yeah, this is great stuff. Having a scalable UI, really, really nice. Now, finally, uh, Nate goes on to say, Darren House, our director of QA, posted a really in-depth dev blog. That is something I touched on just briefly a moment ago, and it's something that we're going to dive into right here. But this is really long. It's got quite a few um, thousand words going on here. I think maybe in the region of three to four thousand view, uh, words. So we're not going to um, go into all of this, but I do want to go into some detail. So there we've got good old Kerbal of uh, Darren. Did I say Darren earlier? So name is Darren. Sorry if I'm mispronouncing your name there. And thanks for this post, by the way. Darren is the new director of Q&A at Intercept Games. Um, got a lot of experience apparently in gaming, both as a hardcore gamer, as well as working both for Microsoft in the past, as well as Amazon. So been working in QA since the 90s. So nice to know there's plenty of experience going on. So one of the most interesting things I do want to just briefly refer to again now, let's give it that message down there, uh, is the fact that yes, Kerbal Space Program is very complex to test. And if we go down here, we can see as I that highlighted factorial 245 massive number. That's um, a number that's 481 digits long. So insanely, insanely long. Now, that's not I don't get the impression here that QA and that Intercept Games are making excuses here. They're in fact going out of their way to really illustrate to us as players just how complex it is to at test Kerbal Space Program 2. And this was a part of Nate's post last week where he said QA is one of the reasons, one of the perhaps the top reason for um, the slowdown in the release cadence of updates. What are you currently working on? You can pretty much look at the roadmap and see all the stuff that's coming and we're involved with all of it. So it seems that all of the stuff, very clearly, they seem to be working on some part of multiplayer right here. We can see that. Uh, we're involved in all of that lately. We've been developing, we're deeply involved in patch one and two, which are now out, while at the same time getting early looks at features that are still quite a way out. Something like multiplayer below, where we can see a Kerbal and some other names here, some other uh, player numbers. Looks like maybe eight players, potentially, if I'm reading that correctly and assuming that P5, P number five is player number five. Here they touch on minimum hardware recommended specs, which we know at minimum hardware requirements are very high, generally speaking. One thing I wanted to talk about here is that they've said that they want to decrease the minimum specs over time. 
Our goal is to slowly decrease the minimum requirements over time, but we can't guarantee where it will go or what those requirements will be. We'll use the data that comes in from users, automated benchmarks that we run, as well as in-house testing to monitor performance over time. So finally, uh, the last thing I want to touch on here is, and I'm going to find, um, so we ban is it? There was a bit here I want to find. Here we go. Um, this is really good to hear, actually. I'm quite pleased to see this. Um, they're talking right at the start of the post, but I'm leaving this until the end here. Uh, it's how people discuss the game. So in my previous video, I titled the video on KSP2, the video I did not want to make. Now, I did get some criticism in the comment section for making such a video, partially because people under misunderstood what I was talking about. They assumed I was complaining about the slowdown of the release cadence, not really understanding that I was actually talking about the lack of uh, transparency from Intercept Games and a private division on what is going on, and the lack of acknowledgement of the game breaking bugs and um, performance issues. But I think I was very impaled compared to what a lot of people are. Some people are very harsh. And indeed, elsewhere on the forums and on Reddit, you'll see that some people have been very, very harsh. So, what do Intercept Games have to say about that? Well, the guy here has said that he's had a chat with Dakota, who's part of the community team and others on the community team. And the community team don't ban people for hitting us hard with criticism. Because as with many other games, you'll see this, I've seen this on uh, Elite Dangerous, I've seen it on Microsoft Flight Simulator, the community team do welcome criticism in all its form. As Darren says here, you bought the game, you are very entitled to go full rage mode on the boards when you run into an issue. And yes, that's taken into account that this is an early access game. People are still entitled, he says, to go full rage mode. But, and this is equally important, at the same time, we do not have to read it. So if you're over to the top and just troll in on the boards, we probably aren't going to be reading that. But if you're giving harsh but fair critics, we take that to heart and bring the voice back to the greater team and do everything we can to ensure it gets taken care of. So this is really good news, and I think it really should put paid to the people who keep saying, stop criticising, you know it's early access, just put up with the bugs, just put up with the bad performance. No. The point of early access is to criticise, it is to give feedback, and it seems that Intersect Games welcome that criticism in all its forms. And I'm really glad and really pleased to see them saying that. So, yeah, really good news there. So, overall, really good, um, really good development updates here from both Nate Simpson as well as the QA team. Great to see. If you have any comments that you'd like to leave in the section below, do leave them. What are your thoughts on both of these updates? I'd love to hear from you. As always, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you guys and girls next time.